Good morning, everybody. In today's Touch Designer tutorial, we will actually learn how to create this beautiful typographic effect. Um, well, Touch Designer basically provides a lot of, lot of options for uh, a developer to design some really good animations in typography. So this is one animation that we would say. Uh, of course, there are different versions that we will be able to create in this. And then there is another um, typographic animation that we will be able to create. Uh, you would actually see how easy it is to create things um, in its entirety. And with this tutorial, I also wanted to bring you guys towards my Patreon page. It would be amazing if you guys, you know, provide me your support on uh, Patreon. Your every contribution literally means a lot to me. Uh, and, you know, trust me, it um, it adds so much of um, uh, value to me. All right, let's get going. Let's clear the canvas first. All right, so first thing is we want to get a text. And again, you know, everything that we are going to work on is going to be in tops. So let's get text as um, our node. Now, as you can see, when you actually bring the text node, everything is just in the center and this is where the text where you can actually go and put your text forward so in this i'm just gonna put uh typography okay so that's my uh that's my text i just want to find out um so so through font you will be able to change the size of the font so let's reduce the size and as you can see uh, this is fitting perfect. This is what I basically need. Now, when you actually zoom in, you realize that, you know, the pixels are literally uh, not that uh, crystal clear or sharp enough. So uh, you can see that by default, whenever you create any top, uh, you have 256, 256 as a size and 8-bit uh, as fixed format, pixel format. So what you do is you go to common, uh, change the resolution from 256 to 1024. So this is how uh, you get the output and the pixel format, make it as 32 bit float. Uh, now, oh, at least, you know, you see something really better. Now let's go to font and instead of 25, let's just start increasing it to the point where we find it uh, appropriate enough. Yeah, so this looks uh, really good. So this is definitely one thing that I wanted to achieve. The second thing that we want to do is we want to actually position um, uh, the text uh, to the upper side. So we can go with X and Y position. So here it's going to be Y and I want to get it to the top. So yes, this is something that I wanted to get around. So 440 is something that I'm going to use, right? Uh, now, the important thing that we want to know is the horizontal alignment. So as you can see, center, left, right uh, is, uh, is the value that we can choose from. But I'm going to stick to center at this point of time. The important part that we would actually work is on the tracking. So as you can see, if I go and change, you can see how well the outputs are turning. So I can do an animation based on how I want to use a tracking and which is what we would be uh, working on. So let's go and create an LFO first. So let's have LFO and the value of LFO, the frequency I'm going to change it from 1 to 0.5. Done. The other thing that I want to ensure is what is the possible value that I want to use as a part of my tracking. So let's let's try with 10. Oh, sorry. So you can see like if I use 50 is something that I can try or use it. So um, I can have my value ranging from minus 20 to plus 15. So this is the range that I want to try. So minus 20 to plus 15, right? So let's go to LFO and my range that I need is minus 15 to plus 20. So that can be achieved uh, by working on the amplitude. So we can say, um, we can have it as a uh, sine wave and uh, we can have it as five. So as you can see, 
it's ranging from minus 5, minus 5 to minus 4, right? Now let's add 20. So you can see that it is going from minus 25 to plus 15, right? So let's give it a try and use that L4 to change the tracking values. So you can see the output is turning out to be really good. Uh, but again, we wanted minus, uh, so it's going up to minus 25 and 215. Uh, maybe, you know, we can try and reduce a little bit more. So instead of 20, I can say 25 and let's see what output we get. So this is much better. But again, this is completely based on you, what you really want to create and uh, go ahead with. So this is uh, a basic that we wanted to create. Now, the other important thing that we want to try and use is caching. So most of the people uh, don't use the cache, but here uh, we can try and uh, simply use how caching can actually help to get the better output. So cache size is by default 32, but I'll make it as 100 for now, right? And uh, then there is an operator called as cache select. So this cache select uh, will have the cache top as a cache and the index value will determine what value, what frame value that we are picking it out from the cache. As you can see, the cache has got buffer size of 100 and we just want to write a code in such a way that we select certain cache values. So what we are going to use is uh, we want to ensure that we are picking up 20th frame from uh, the cache size of 100. So that pretty much can be done, or maybe you know, 10th frame, not the 10th, 20th one. So let's decide that we want to go with 10th frame. So the code that we have to write is me dot digits, then uh, brackets into minus 10. Okay, so let's make a correction. And there you go. And then what I really want to do is I want to use transform and I want to move my output little down. Now, at what point I can bring it down so I can use my translate X and Y. I just want to make changes on my Y position. So let's use Y and let's bring it down. So as you can see, I can go by every point so I can go by 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and accordingly I can get a better output. So let's go with an option of changing by 0.1 value. So that pretty much can be done with the same option. So me dot digits into minus 0.1. So you can see the output, right? Now, what we have done is we have ensured that every time we copy paste these items, we get the same result and we don't need to do any code change, right? So control C, control V, control V, control V. And you can see for everything, we have uh, an easy output, right? So again, we go with control V, control V, control V, control V. And now we have got to a point where we have filled up our, um, our output. Now let's do this. Let's use a comp, composite operator, and try to get every output that we have produced uh, through caching. And the operator that and the operator that we are going to use in comp uh, is going to be add. So now you can see there's a beautiful uh, result we are actually getting as a part of our output. The other option that you would actually see is uh, we don't literally see any gap and that can very well be used or can be achieved by changing the size of a text. So as you can see, the size of a text is 104. We can make it as 100. And if we look at the output, uh, we have started getting a little bit of space. Now, the other thing that we can try is we can add one more node so that we can fill up this uh, space. Um, 
So let's go and use one more copy and paste. So we got this. And the other thing that we want to do, so we copied uh, the operator. Okay, so now the output is perfect. Okay, now the other thing that we want to use is we may have an option of adding one more um, option. So in transform, you are using minus uh, 0.1. So we can make it as, or, or we can just raise text one. So you can see its position is at 440, but we can go little higher by every individual point and we can go to the top. So instead of 440, we are going at 460. And we can see the output is coming out to be perfect and which is what we need. So this is, this is one output that you can produce. Um, so let's go to uh, RGB key. And there you go. So this is one typography output that you can produce with a uh, touch designer. Now the other thing that you definitely have an option of playing around is playing with the horizontal alignment. So you can play, you can make it as left. So it gives you a different output altogether. And which is what you can actually see it on my uh, Instagram as well. Uh, the uh, second option is you can change the horizontal alignment from left to right and you'd see a better output. So again, there are so many options that you can definitely give a try and play around with. The second important option that you may want to do is about the font. Which font do you want to try and play around with? So you can, by default, it gets selected as Wadana, but then you also have an option of selecting Arial Black. So when you use Arial Black, you get a perfect output. Uh, the font, I like Arial Black most of the time. It's very bold, very strong, and gives a very crisp output and which is why I use it. So that's something that you can try and use. Uh, the other option that you could actually try and do is playing around with the size of the font. So let's use LFO for now. Uh, I like LFO because it's very quick and allows you to try out a lot of things in a very short span of time. You don't have to worry about the logics, the events and triggers and everything. So any ideas if you have, you can actually do it with LFO uh, quickly. So what I want to do is I want to change, I want to make it as sign, but the frequency I want to make it as 0.5. I just, I just don't want things to go very fast. Uh, what I want to do is I want to change my size from 100 to 80, right? So I, I will use offset as 90 and then I'll change amplitude as 10. So you can see my output is ranging from 80 to 100, and which is what I wanted to achieve. Now, simply what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this LFO and drag the value to the font size. And as soon as I do it, this is where I get a beautiful output. Now, uh, you may want to play around with the frequency of it. So uh, instead of 0.5, you can make it as one and you can see the output. And now it has really more um, um, variance and uh, it can actually produce some uh, different flavor altogether. Uh, you can also try and change uh, the uh, horizontal alignment. So you can go and select different thing. The other option that you may want to play around is uh, using some of the uh, displacement uh, effect. So what you do is you go and um, create the edge. So, okay, before we go to that, uh, let me show you a couple of different options here. So as you can see, display method has been termed as automatic, but you can try with polygon. So it gives you a different feel. Then you have stroke. So a stroke is definitely uh, a stroke um, like the outline. Now those outlines can be made uh, really, really sharp by changing the stroke value. And you can see how well the output is turning out to be good.
So all of these options are definitely available. All you do is like, you know, try and figure out things by yourself. Um, so this is definitely one that we can try, but uh, then you have bitmap, uh, which again provides a different uh, option. Um, but generally, you know, you can go with automatic, uh, which is nice. And then you can go with the stroke if at all, um, that's the need that you guys have. Uh, the last thing, uh, is, uh, we want to try and use edge. So let's use edge and I'm going to forward the output from comp to this edge. And you can see it automatically creates that level of edge. The advantage of using edge is the seamlessness of my output. So if I change my font format here, it creates like an overlapping. So you can see T and Y is actually being overlapped and you can see uh, there are uh, the cuts coming in. But if I use edge, I am literally having a flawless output and which is what you can observe it here. And which is why, you know, different combinations can produce some of the outputs. So here, OG. So as soon as they come together, the overlapping disappears and it becomes a seamless option. So this is definitely one I wanted to do. And then I will be using displacement. So let's use displace and let's go with uh, first option here and second option here. And now you can see there's not much good output coming in, but I'm gonna change displacement weight from one to zero one. And there you go. So you can see how good the output is, right? Uh, then on top of it, I would want to use a composite. So let's use a composite and then I'm going to put this composite on top and instead of multiply, I would just say over. So you can have one more beautiful output. So again, uh, the base foundation comes from uh, this entire part. In fact, the base is just coming from this and then we are just using bunch of operators to produce some of this beautiful output. As you can see how impactful and powerful these all options are and how the beautiful output can be created. So uh, again, you can just go around and change the value from um, uh, center to left, left to right, or whatever is something that you find it appropriate enough. So this is something that I wanted to showcase as a part of this output, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There would be more tutorials that I'm gonna bring it out uh, on typography. Uh, you would definitely have a lot of good options to play around with. And um, yeah, uh, and obviously, you know, your support on Patreon is literally helping me a lot. And um, I just wanted to bring you guys to my YouTube channel. If you guys can please, um, uh, you know, write to me on YouTube, your comments. Uh, it definitely brings a lot of good smile and it, it makes me feel happy that, you know, there are people around the world that um, who are just going through my tutorials and learning a lot. And um, yeah, I look forward to those comments and uh, look forward to interact with everybody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's 10.30 a.m. in Sydney. It's a beautiful day outside, uh, but yeah, I I say goodbye to you uh, at this point of time, but I'll definitely bring some really cool tutorials for all of you to learn. And yes, I'm just saying goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye for now.